a whole lot of interesting new EVs are coming on the market and a whole lot of people are saying, huh, maybe now's the time. And as soon as you identify the right car, your mind immediately goes to the next part. What's the right way to charge it? Let me give you a quick 101 on EV charging at home. First, let's correct the biggest misnomer in electric car charging at home, and that is that that is a charger. That's actually not a charger. It and its associated connector are what's called FC, Electric Vehicle Service Equipment. It's basically an AC power interface. It takes the power from your house, which is also AC, and sends it into the car via this connector, and that then powers the charger, which is in the car, mated to the car's battery. This is because the relationship between charger and battery is very specific and needs to be very precise within any given maker model of electric vehicle. So they just ask you to give their charger power through one of these. A lot of folks are going to call this a charger, just know it's not. And that's why, for example, we have a Ford FC on the wall and I'm using it to connect to a Rivian. Because at this level, this is all fairly generic AC power delivery. Once you get into the car, things get very specific and proprietary, but this stuff is fairly interchangeable. Now that we know what a charger is compared to an FC, the simplest way to charge your car is to use the level one electric vehicle adapter that comes with every electric car. You don't need to buy anything. They all include one of these. You can always tell it's got a household plug on this end, and that's exactly what you do. Plug it into any grounded household outlet and now this goes to the car and that's it you're charging you're charging slowly a few miles per hour give or take depending on your vehicle's capacity and charger design that'll work if you are the average person that drives maybe 20 30 miles a day puts your car away late afternoon early evening and lets it sit overnight you're probably fine with this and may not need to buy any other equipment. The other nice thing about level one devices is they are sort of a survival charger. You can plug them in anywhere. So you kind of want to keep one in your car. Uh, anywhere you go, you can get a few more miles in a reasonable amount of time to get to a faster charger and then really stock up on power. That's kind of how you'd think about it in that scenario. But again, if you drive 20, 30 miles a day and keep the car overnight for 8 to 12 hours, I think you're good with level 1. Now, it's always a good idea, a good investment to put a level 2 charge adapter or FC into your house. And here's why. It differs radically from level 1 because of the voltage it uses. It ties into the 240 circuit in your house over at your circuit breaker like a dryer or an electric range would do, a lot more power, right? And it's not only double the voltage of a conventional household outlet, but it has access to far more amperage or current. Your average household outlet is 15 amps, a few or 20. These guys can go way up, 30, 50, 60, 80 amps. That amount of current that this can bring into the vehicle is the big difference in how fast it can put range back into the car. How much faster can level two work than level one? That'll depend on how many amps you connect this to at your circuit breaker panel. Your electrician will do that. So how much power capacity can you get it? And then how much power capacity can the car take from this level two FC? So there's a couple of places where the amps have to be as high as possible and as high as usable. In general, our CNET reviews of Level 2 home charge equipment indicates that they can put roughly 12 to 60 miles of range back into your car per hour. Okay, so what does it cost to get Level 2 at your connector in your home for your electric car? These we find are in a sweet spot of five to $700 for the hardware. That includes this whole plug, long cable, and that box there. And then it stops up there at the plug where you'll typically plug this into a dedicated outlet that your electrician installs. So five to seven hundred bucks for the hardware and then maybe a thousand to fifteen hundred for your electrician to pull the line all the way along, put it in some conduit, get it all done right and pull a permit in most areas. So that's not a 
heck of a lot of money to have really high quality rapid charging at home. And by the way, this can be used if your car is in the garage or it can be snaked out through the garage door and used if your car parks out in the driveway. Okay, we've got level one and level two figured out, right? They're basically two different levels of capability of charging. Now, the question is, how do you get either one into your car? And the good news is there used to be a whole bunch of different plugs like this. Now we're down to basically two. This guy and the thing Tesla uses. We'll talk about that in a minute. This is called a J1772. Catchy name, right? But it's the de facto charge connector in North America aside from Tesla vehicles. Very common now, which is good. And what you see in here are five pins. The three big ones correspond to the three pins you see on a household outlet. Black, white, and green, or line, neutral, and ground, if you're at all familiar with how houses are wired. The two little pins are controlling communication things. So this can let the FC handshake with the vehicle. Now, how this works is also very interesting when you look inside, say, this Rivian. Here's a little door beneath the matching outlet plug. What's that for? That is for two additional pins. There's a version of this that also has two more big pins under its chin, if you will, to allow a DC fast charge through those pins. That's what's called level three charging. It's best known for its application in Tesla superchargers, for example. For the home charging topic that we're talking about today, don't worry about it. You're not going to have DC fast charging at home because you don't have DC at home. So I'm going to close that door and that is everything you've got to worry about for the home. Now, Tesla. Tesla has its own charge connector. Fortunately, at some level, electrons are electrons. So there are readily available adapters that let you bridge this to Tesla's wiring layout or connector layout. It's not too much of a big deal. Okay, so in sum, if you've got your own home and you buy an EV, start with the level one connector that comes with it. There's nothing to lose. It may work fine for you. If not, no big deal to get a level two installed. And I think it's a good investment. It adds value to your home beyond its actual cost because you've done the work and the permit pulling and the contracting to get it done. Another thing to bear in mind is when you do that, Google around for any rebates or tax credits that might be in effect at that time. They tend to be a moving target. I don't see a lot of them right now as of my taping today, but you want to check for them because it's not just these guys that have some credits and rebates available for them. This stuff can as well.